Good afternoon and welcome to the State Board of Education meeting for December 13th of 2022. We are going to start today's meeting with our Pledge of Allegiance, which will be led by Dr. Stapleton. If you'd all please rise. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Next, we have approval of the State Board of Education <coughs> minutes for November the 8th of 2022. <coughs> I believe we may have a correction to make, Dr. Stapleton. I did see one spot. Um, on page five, when it said that Chair Walters recognized Ms. Collier for the report from Standards Learning and Accountability, if we can just change that to Friars. Okay. With that one amendment, is there any objection to approving the minutes as presented? Hearing none, the minutes are approved by unanimous consent. Next item is approval of today's agenda. Is there any objection to approving the agenda as presented? Hearing none, the agenda is approved by unanimous consent. And we've got a lot of guests today and a lot of staff folks with us. Uh, Dr. Stapleton's family members are here, so we're going to let her introduce them at the appropriate time a little bit later. Uh, we have Kathy Maness with the Palmetto State Teachers Association. We have just like Stephen Corsini, Brenda McCormick from South Carolina Department of Education. Uh, We've got some folks that need their handwriting checked here because I can't quite figure out. <laughs> I thought mine was bad, but uh, uh, looks like Christy Amundsen, maybe, and Mandy Hawker, and Casey Cook. We do not have anybody on the media list that signed up, and we also don't have anybody signed up for public comments today. But welcome to everybody in attendance today. The December meeting is always a special meeting. And we're glad you could be with us, as well as those folks that are joining us online this afternoon. So this will be my last time is uh, presiding over the meeting of state board chair today. And this is a time for my report and certainly uh, just a bittersweet thing to do that. I've enjoyed my year of service. Uh, unfortunately, for some of you, I will be here again next year. I do have a term <laughs> left, a year left in my term. So I'll, I'll just be sitting in a different seat. But part of the, what makes this meeting so special is recognizing those who have given their times and talents uh, to serve. And so we're going to do that here today. So what we're going to do is I'm going to come around to the center so we can make sure that we've got the photos right, the streaming right, and that all our guests can see what's going on as well. So as I call you, I'll ask you to join me in the center. And then somebody's going to have to be my fan of white and help bring these things over as we... I will. I'll do that. Well, you can't do that right now, but you can come on while you're You're going to get the first. Oh, my goodness. Well, I have passion with how about that. I didn't realize I got a prize. You're going to get the prize today, too. So, and, you know, we just felt it was very appropriate. You've meant so much to us for giving a service for the past eight years. I know I first got to meet Molly right after she took office and she came in with great ideas and she was looking for help on various task force and committees. And so that was my introduction to Molly and it seems like we've been working together ever since. And I've certainly enjoyed every minute of it. Uh, I, you would be hard pressed to find anybody, not only in this state, but the country, more devoted to public education than Molly Spirit. And so it's so my honor today on behalf of our board give you this very small token of our appreciation for your service to the state of South Carolina, our students, our teachers, and also all you've done for us here at the State Board of Education. comments during your report time and uh, tell us about your travel plans next month and stuff. <laughs> 
This is also the time that we make presentations to our uh, outgoing state board members. So we're going to invite them to come up. And first, Kathy Chapman, if you'll join us up here, please. Kathy's represented the Fourth Circuit, which uh, is Chesterfield, Darlington, Dillon, and Marlboro counties. Uh, she joined us in 2019. So they actually calculated this for us. Three years, 11 months, and 24 days. <laughs> Depending on what time we adjourn, we'll add the hours to the But certainly, we appreciate your service. Uh, you've been a tremendous help to me, uh, especially dealing with these license cases this year. You know, we found out this morning that, that uh, we probably have more license cases this year than ever before. Certainly, that's a testament not only to our staff, but to your leadership over that community. So we want to thank you for your service. And there is your recognition. Thank you. Mr. Carl Hensey is representing the Seventh Circuit, Spartanburg and Cherokee Counties. Uh, he was appointed in April 2019. His first meeting was June 2019. So he has three years, eight months, and 27 days. Uh, this will be his final meeting. He will wait for his successor. Uh, to be appointed for us, but certainly you've been a valuable member for our board, and we appreciate all that you've done for us. So, on behalf of our board, you're here. And Mr. Browski is the Ninth Circuit, Larry Browski, uh, Berkeley and Charleston counties. He was appointed on March 28, 2019. His first board meeting was in June of 2019. So he has three years, nine months, and four days of service. And uh, he's going to have a new gig coming up here shortly. He's going to be a Charleston County Council member. So congratulations <laughs> on that. And So good, Ben. Uh -huh. Dr. Chris Woodall. <laughs> You'll come up. Dr. Woodall represented the 16th Circuit of York and Union County from January of 2019 to uh, March 2019 was our first meeting. Three years, nine months, and four days. Of course, she was my predecessor, Chair of the State Board of Education, and certainly was a role model and mentor for me, and she me out of trouble. Most of them. But thank you. Superintendent, we're going off the script here, but I think we're going to need you to come back and join us here. <laughs> yes, we are. Yes, we are. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, members of the board, thank you all for allowing us to come today. It's been a special time for us. Uh, the South Carolina Association for Pupil Transportation, better known for, as SCAP. I'm Ronnie Townsend, and I'm executive director for SCAP, and we wanted to come and to recognize Molly for some important things that she's done for us. And if you'll give me just a minute or two, uh, I think we can re uh, tell you a little bit more about what she has done. We do thank you for each one of your service. Those of you that are going off the board, uh, I wish you the best in what you could do. I served in the legislature for 22 years down here and saw a lot of people coming in off the board, but the job that you do and the responsibility that you hold is enormous for public education. We thank you all very much for what you do and the time you give. Molly? <laughs> I can do this because Molly and I go back a long ways, okay? <laughs> this is not a foot on for show thing. This is for true, true friendship. Molly and I served together in the house, and she's put her service together for 
serving the people of Saluda County. She's entertained the people of Saluda County with her <laughs> daddy and at festivals. You've been a teacher. You've been an administrator. Molly, I can't think of much you hadn't done. But we want to recognize you today for what you've done for transportation in this state since you took over as superintendent. You've added a statewide routing GPS and routing software and more efficient routes for parents and for buses to improve safety and, and improve efficiency. You've awarded approximately $32 million in, in VW settlement funding. The fleet has a total of 453 propane bus buses now that we didn't have, making more efficient. EPA clean school grants totaling $70 million to purchase new electric school buses. And by the way, we do have a new electric school bus right out in front. If y'all want to go out there and look at it, want to get on it, blow the horn, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Don't run the battery down, though, we do up with the horn blowing. But, but we have had new buses, uh, air conditioning on all special needs buses. We have 18 districts will receive uh, the new electric buses. You have reduced the Type D fleet from one time high of 55% to just 5.5%. This saved the agency approximately $60 million by doing that and enabled us to purchase an additional eight, 600 new Type C buses. The fleet is 60% more economical today, better fuel economy, less maintenance, routing program. The annual service calls are down, have been reduced from 16,000, 18,000 to 5,000. That's a lot. Y'all have, have been supporting her, and we appreciate that as a, those of you on the state board to do that, and the legislature that's gone to do it. You're using approximately 2.7 million <laughs> less gallons of diesel fuel annually. Now, the fuel people probably ain't going to like that, but that's okay. <laughs> Rather when Molly, than when Molly came into office. At today's fuel prices, $4 per gallon, that's an annual savings of approximately $10 million. Molly, I can't say enough for you, honey. Uh, we've served together. We've worked together. We've cried together. We've lived together. We've been done everything. Your family means so much to you. We know you're retiring to be able to spend more time with your family. We're fortunate to have had your service all these years, and I know you're not done yet. I know you're not. So in presenting to you the South Carolina Association of People Transportation, the first Lifetime Achievement Award that this association has ever given, and we want to But thank you. This obviously, obviously, this means a lot to me. But seeing these folks walk in the door tops it all. Um, I truly believe that a system is only as strong as its weakest link. And for a long time, our transportation service, our buses, and our people have been overlooked and not really appreciated like they should be. Because as I tell you gentlemen and ladies and our bus drivers whenever I see them, you really, you're the top priority. First priority, first person who greets our children, y'all get the buses up running and they're out there while we're still sleeping and to get our children to school on time and then you take them home after we've gone home. <laughs> and I appreciate it. And you deserve this. I certainly, you said I, Molly did this, did this. Molly did none of that alone. It was a great team. It was great leadership. Miracle workers who had kept the system running without <laughs> the attention they needed. But, you know, we, we did it together. And it took the General Assembly supporting us, all of us, former chair of the House Education and Public Works Committee, it took all of us, and I'm so proud, and it took the board, everybody, the 
you know, just even the legislature allowing us to lease purchase. There were so many pieces to this, but um, I truly love you all and appreciate what you do. And I hope you feel that. And the whole state of South Carolina appreciates what y'all do. And it has been a joy to see our transportation system going from one that really we couldn't give it away. <laughs> you know, it was such a, it was dilapidated, but y'all kept it going and we don't want to give it away. I mean, y'all do a miraculous job every day and I'm so proud. We went from a fleet of disarray to the, I think the best public fleet in America. And it took a lot of us working together. And I accept this and I'll treasure this forever. Thank y'all for what you do. Mm -hmm. Looking at it. Okay. We appreciate it. Thank, thank y'all for your time. And so, yeah, the, and thank all of you for all that you do from a grateful board. Uh, we appreciate it. And we don't say it enough. Thank you. Thank you. So, yes, the bus is out front. And uh, at, at the conclusion of the meeting, you're welcome to stop by, take a quick tour of it. I uh, don't think we're going to road test it today. They can. <laughs> they, can. Part, they can ride it if they want to. We'll carry them around the block if they want to ride it. Get out somewhere. Nah, we'll, we'll, we'll bring them back. <laughs> Thank you very much. We need more space for all these awards up here, Madam Superintendent. <laughs> now it's time to turn the floor over to you. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chair. It's been an honor to serve with you. Thank you for your service. And all of you board members, um, <coughs> you know, I, I think people don't realize you all don't get paid for this. You, you may get your gas, maybe. You've got to live far enough away to be able to get gas money. <laughs> but... Um, it is true public service, what you all do, and I appreciate you. We, I'm so thankful that we have had such good boards during my eight years. And I think it's because we all came to the board, all of you came to the board to do your part in supporting public education in this state. The intent is not that we always agree. We don't, we don't want, really want that. We want different opinions. And, um, but I'm just so grateful for the spirit of camaraderie and purpose that you all have served with over my eight years. Um, it, has, it has really been wonderful to watch you and I think elevate, you all have elevated the work of the State Board by not only the policies that you have developed, but in the way that you have carried on your business. And it's a good role model for 
all of us uh, across South Carolina and the nation as to how boards and adults need to come together and work together. So thank you. It's been a true honor. Uh, I'll share with you just uh, a couple of things that have happened over the last few weeks. This last week, I wish you all could have been with me and a few of our staff. Uh, I guess it was three weeks ago, we entertained for lunch the 10 finalists for the United States Senate Youth Program. Outstanding young people from high schools across the state who I asked each of them to stand up and tell us one thing that they were proud. Their parents were invited and they, had inter they were interviewed by a, a distinguished group for a selection of the top two, which was extremely, extremely difficult to do, I'm sure. But each student came up and told about something that they had done that they were proud of. And it really was magnificent from starting their own foundations that had raised over a quarter million dollars already for some community project to helping register people to vote, whatever. It, it was just, you would be so proud. And we need to, we need not to forget that because <laughs> our, our young people in our schools, we're under such criticism. But even with that criticism, we're producing wonderful young people who are so talented and well prepared and not just in academics and skills, but they're skilled in citizenship. So I was so proud. And then the judges selected two young people to represent us at the United States Senate Youth Program in Washington, D.C. Uh, Kesaraj Talati of J.L. Mann High School in Greenville County is the young gentleman on the right. And by the way, he was also selected this past summer as the vice president of Voice Nation. Wow. Pretty strong. Uh, he has his own philanthropic group that he has created and works with. <laughs> and the young lady, Madison Hahn of May River High School in Beaufort County, another, I met her this summer at, at Palmetto Girls State. She is quite accomplished in Model United Nations and in her debate skills. So we are going to be well represented. And they each receive a $10,000 scholarship. So. Congratulations to their families and to their school and communities for how they have been raised up in their community. Then uh, also another happy thing was, um, you know, I, I grew up on a farm and I'm always happy to see anything that we can do to promote agriculture in this state. And we're really proud. And again, this is in Virgie Chambers uh, office. I think she may have stepped out, but we awarded uh, uh, to the South Carolina Department of Agriculture, a $3.1 million grant uh, came from the federal, uh, USDA to us, to them, to Agriculture Department, that will supply fresh and local foods to districts across the state. And it will also, also target work, helping us work with local farmers. And so this is so important. And I know that uh, South Carolina Department of Agriculture has promoted that uh, grant during the last couple of weeks, but we're so happy to work with them. And there are a lot of issues now. You know, you've probably been seeing that. I think it's something that we'll look at, the legislature will be looking at this next year. You know, during COVID, we, we fed all of our children in the United States for free. And that changed, that, that sunsetted. And so there's uh, a lot of uh, children now who are paying, many families are able to pay, but there are still some children who um, we need to make sure that they all have access to meals at school. So I think you'll be hearing, y'all may have to deal with that in the upcoming year, but certainly a strong program and we're very proud of the work that our office here does across um, with our food service programs across <coughs> the state. I, I was gonna announce, um, about the electric bus, I saw that out front. I didn't know you knew it was here, but you must have known it was here. Um, but this is my last state board meeting. Uh, you all have decided that the next board meeting, as you should, and I recommended that you move the date of that so that the new state superintendent uh, will be able to attend that in January. I have been meeting with Superintendent-elect Weaver. She's, she uh, has been here in the building. We're trying to have a very smooth transition. She has been here meeting with our staff, uh, learning, planning, 
And uh, I, I feel very good that we're in good hands and that uh, she will, I think you will enjoy working with her very much. So she, she will be here at the next meeting. But I would be remiss if I did not recognize the people who have really done the work and deserve the credit. And that's all of our employees here at the Department of Education, um, a hardworking group who don't get to see the students very much but they know that their work impacts students and that's what it's really all about and we're so proud of them. So for the employees that are in the audience, would y'all just stand please? Uh, deputies, you can stay seated. Don't stand up. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you all. wonderful, wonderful group. I can't name them all, won't do that, but, but I, I appreciate you all. I love you very much and just thank you for your dedicated service. But particularly, I do want to thank the folks who have served as my deputies over the last eight years. Um, a few have been here the entire time, and uh, I, I really appreciate them so much. That's Betsy Carpenter, and Kathy Hazelwood, if you two would stand up. They started with me uh, in January 2015. Um, Virgie, I'm sorry, Virgie's back at Virgie, and Virgie as well. She was here on that momentous day. And, and we came in, we came in uh, that day and we had no academic standards. Um, we had no parking. <laughs> There are a lot of things we didn't have. I don't mean us. The employees did not have reserved parking, and we said, we're going to fix that. And Betsy took that major task on. But um, then there are other deputies who joined along the way. And that, David Mathis and Nancy Williams, uh, 2016, Nancy became, she was here in the finance department. Nancy became, I think, probably the youngest ever uh, and homegrown financial officer to run the entire State Department of Education and over all the funding that goes out to school districts. So Nancy, uh, graduate of Denmark High School, we're so proud of her. Stand up, Nancy. Thank you for what you've done. And then finally, my dear friend and my local superintendent, Dr. David Mathis, decided he was going to retire from Saluda. And I said, David, I called him, would you come help me do early learning, be the director of early learning? And he said, sure, I will. So he came down, and he, we had him here for about four weeks. And I said, now will you be a deputy and take on the rest of the agency? <laughs> and over the, over the course of the last few years, he has taken more and more and more as folks have, if we have reorganized as folks have left for other opportunities. But done a fantastic job, David. Thank you. David Mathis, please stand. Thank you. And there are other folks I'd love to recognize all of you, but thank you so much. Uh, it, has been, it has been a hard job, but it's been a fun job. And we are really proud because we talked uh, in staff this week. Um, I, can, I can clearly say that every decision we made, and it was us making it as a group, we made it in the best interest of students. Sometimes it upset folks, <laughs> and uh, sometimes they were tough decisions. We made some very bold decisions to manage districts, to consolidate districts, even close schools, and that's, those are tough. But truly, truly, in my heart, we made the decisions. We can sleep well, and I say job well done, um, and it, we, it has been a pleasure to serve the people of South Carolina. So thank you. Thank you, Madam Superintendent. Next is our parliamentarian comments. Ms. Hazelwood. My final opportunity to remind you is that Mr. <laughs> Henze, who has uh, taken the, uh, the correct route on any given day and is, has formally resigned as of today, following today's meeting, he is free at last, um, <laughs> free at last from the burden of statements of economic interest. So March 30th mm -hmm. is your deadline. So if you are still sitting in a seat on March 30th, you that have, will not retire, 
uh, or will not resign, then you must file. Just that's your reminder. The next person who will be up here as parliamentarian may not have that um, knowledge. I hope he will. I'll, I'll talk to him about it and tell him how many times he has to talk about it. Um, but I, I did want to have just a sec to say I've enjoyed working with all of you, but I have worked with Mr. Brennan for the entire eight years, and he was our chair twice when we really needed um, that kind of strong leadership. And he, he started us with COVID. Uh, not, his second term was COVID. He didn't start COVID. He was not, <laughs> oh, it's not him. patient zero so of COVID. <laughs> but he was our chair at COVID. And if, for, I mean, oh my God, if you go back, remember, I've tried to block out all the uh, meetings we had where no one could get on and all of it. And we've uh, mastered it. IT has mastered it. We can have a meeting at the drop of a hat now. Um, but I really just appreciated your leadership throughout that, those times, but you are a wonderful group, and I hope that we can find equally responsive and dedicated members for this board, because um, you do a yeoman's, yeoman's work every time. Thank you. Hmm. Thank you. Mr. Brennan, I think you wanted to speak. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, and Kathy, th thank you for that. I, that, means, that means a great deal uh, to me. Uh, I don't know how many general counsels I've had to work with since I've been on the board. I know just one in this administration. The others may have had more than one. I can't remember, but uh, but you you've clearly been at the top of the list mm -hmm. in general general counsels, and you've been a joy to to work with. But it's also my third superintendent uh, that I've worked with. Um, and, and Molly, I got to tell you, and this, this is really a tribute to what you just said about your, your team, but this has been the greatest team that I've had the opportunity to work with uh, in the department for all eight, eight years. And uh, I have such admiration for all of you for, for what you do and, and how you do it. And uh, you're making a difference in lives. You're making a difference in lives of parents and students, bus drivers. And, you know, the list goes on and on and, and on. And, uh, you know, I've known Ellen Weaver for a long time. She's going to have a tough time trying to top this administration. So I'm just grateful for, for each of you. And uh, as Rory Rogers once said, happy trails to you until we meet again. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Well said, Mr. Brennan. Mm. So next would have been public comments, but nobody signed up. And I'm not about to open the floor, because if I did, we'd be here all <laughs> afternoon with testimonials. And I think we can all feel the love in the room right now. So we're going to move on to our state board items, the first of which is our policy and legislative committee. Uh, we had two items on the agenda this morning. Uh, the first one was actually uh, was potentially going to be an action item. We changed it to an information item, and that has to do with the adoption of a statewide policy for unencumbered time. Uh, we had a, a very good discussion about it and what we think needs to be in it. We're also going to be reaching out for more input from the stakeholders because we want to make sure we get this right before we send it out. So uh, we've deferred that taking action on that. It will be at next month's board meeting where we'll consider a draft policy and uh, then we'll have something we can send out to districts. Some of them have already had things in place. We're going to look at those as well. But we want to make sure that everybody's had a chance to weigh in on this uh, before we take action. Second item we had was the 2022 Capital Needs Report. Uh, that was presented to us, and uh, it was approved and placed on the consent agenda. So that actually comes as a motion from me, I guess, and uh, does not require a second. Was there any discussion about that? Not all in favor of that report. If you vote by saying aye. 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 Any opposed, no. And the motion carries. Next up is educator professions. And I have to look around the room because we changed all the seats now uh, <laughs> in order of our judicial districts. And so I'm looking for people who aren't there because Ms. <laughs> Lee's now over here. Thank you, Chairman Walters. The Education <coughs> Professions Committee approved six action items earlier this morning. 
Item one is the state accreditation decision, Columbia College. Item two is the Professional Review Committee, PRC, new membership approval. The third action item is a new educator preparation program approval recommendation, University of South Carolina, Columbia, Bachelor of Arts in Special Education. Item four is a new educator preparation program approval recommendation, Anderson University Bachelor of Science in Physical Education. Item five is Educator Preparation Program Modifications, Winthrop University Bachelor of Science in Early Childhood Education. And the sixth action item, Educator Preparation Program Modifications, Winthrop University Bachelor of Science in Elementary Education. The committee heard one information item this morning, which was an informative presentation on the Collective Leadership Initiative. The Education Professions Committee placed the six action items on the consent agenda. All right, thank you, Ms. Lee. And that is a motion from the committee for their report. It doesn't require a second. Is there any discussion? May I just say, I, I'm happy that you all heard about the Collective Leadership, a summary on that. I, I tell you, I don't, it's, Lillis here, Libby Ortman, I'm not sure it's Libby in the audience, but when I was campaigning in 2014, I was down in Sumter and this lovely lady that I knew, I was my friend, asked me a tough question, what's your stance on collective leadership? And I made up some answer because I really didn't know what she was talking about. <laughs> <laughs> but she said afterwards, it was my dear friend Libby Ortman who said, if you get elected, uh, I want to help you with this. And she explained it to me and came and worked with us. And uh, it's one of the programs that I'm very, very proud of where teachers have a voice and work with their school administrative team to help run the school and make really good decisions. So we've got a number of schools and districts now that are involved and it's growing. And I'm so happy uh, that y'all had that report today. Thank you. All those in favor of vote by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? No. And the motion carries. And now, Ms. Frierson, I know you're over here on this side now, so I found you <laughs> for the Standards Learning and Accountability Committee report. Our committee had four um, action items. Integration of American Sign Language Standards into the 2019 South Carolina College and Career Ready Standards for World Language Proficiency. It was his first reading. Um, then we had um, online testing and Windows extension waiver request. That was our second action item. Our third, report of recommendations from the Instructional Materials um, Advisory Committee for the 2023 adoption cycle. And our fourth was a report of recommendations from the 2022 Instructional Materials Review Panel. We had one information item. South Carolina's Department of Education's Early Learning Curriculum Review of 2022. All right, and that is a motion for the committee's report. It does not require a second. Is there any discussion? If not, all those in favor of vote for saying aye. 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 Any opposed, no. And the motion carries. Ms. Chapman, you're probably going to be glad that this is like your last <laughs> educator license committee report. Uh, it, it was another lengthy morning, but if you'd like to it give was. us that, please. Um, we dealt with 17 cases this morning, um, resulting in two public reprimands and 15 suspensions, and those cases were ratified during the full board meeting. And I want to take a minute uh, before we move on from that to um, note that this year has been a challenge for that committee. I mean, it's kind of built because of COVID, but this year we saw the number of cases increase drastically uh, and people are leaving the profession as well as other reasons for it. And so we kind of challenged the staff in the legal counsel's office that we need to get these things turned around and moving. And so even though they've been short staffed this year, they've been able to bring us more license committee cases and full board cases that have ever been brought before this board before. So I want to publicly commend <laughs> Ms. Hazelwood, uh, Mr. Gunner, Ms. Bratton, all the other folks that work on these cases to get them before us 
so that all stakeholders can get a, a, a fair and timely outcome to their cases. And then I will give the report on the full board educator license committee. Uh, as uh, Ms. Chapman said, we ratified those 17 cases that were heard there, and those are complete. Full board heard seven cases. There were uh, two cases that were applications, uh, one for initial certification, one for PACE program. Those were both denied. Uh, there was a public reprimand, and then there were four cases that were involving suspensions. So that was a total of 24 cases that got resolved today. Now we're going to move along to the nomination committee report. And Ms. Chapman, <coughs> thank you for chairing our committee this year along with your members. And uh, this time you can make your presentation. Okay, thank you, Mr. Chair. The committee met on November the 8th in person to discuss the selection nominees for the 2023 chair elect position. The committee has elected by unanimous consent to present Dr. David O. Shields from the 8th Judicial District as our nominee for the 2023 chair-elect. Thank you very much. So the recommendation of the nomination committee is Dr. David O. Shields be named the SBE chair-elect for 2023. Are there any nominations from the floor? Hearing none, there's no uh, further ones. A uh, motion's been made from the committee does not require a second. Is there any discussion? All those in favor vote by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? No. Congratulations, sir. <laughs> so with that, uh, first, Dr. Stapleton, we're going to do the uh, swearing in oath of office here in just a moment. Would you like to introduce your family and invite them to come up and join you for this occasion? <laughs> They're right there shaking their head no. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, I am very excited to see them here today. It's funny because um, I, I didn't know that they were going to be here. But And then when they came in, I walked over to the corner, and um, my husband, Jason, by the way, you can wave, Jason. Yeah. <laughs> he said, you didn't tell me it wasn't starting at 1, because normally we start at 1. He's like, you didn't tell me it was starting later. And I was like, you didn't tell me you were coming, so I can tell you that. Um, but also, uh, Davis is with him. You wait, Davis. No, it's putting him on the spot. And then Brooks as well. So appreciate them. Being here. Thank you for sharing her with us. All right. So what we're going to do this? We're going to come back around here to the center. Mm -hmm. I'll administer the oath of office to Dr. Stapleton. Then I'm done. I get to have a seat. At which point <laughs> you'll uh, administer the oath to Dr. O'Shields. Okay. And then from that point, you'll be the chair and you'll continue the rest of the meeting. So with that, if we can all swing around to the center. The consent agenda has been distributed. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. 
We have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. All in favor of the motion, please signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed by sign. And that motion carries. The items that were listed next on the agenda, those were included in our consent agenda. Um, we would like to move into information, though. And so we have Dr. David Mathis here with us today to do a literacy update. Thank you, Chair Stapleton. <laughs> Congratulations. Um, it's just fitting in that my, my final literacy update today is the annual um, report of information on uh, summer reading camps. And you've heard a lot about summer reading camps through the years, but they're a very important part of what our teachers and administrators put into place every summer. Um, right after, right before Molly Spearman came into office, um, Actually, in 2014, the South Carolina G General Assembly passed some legislation, um, Act 284, called Read to Succeed. And you've heard a lot about Read to Succeed. Um, it was Molly's task to actually implement that legislation, um, which addresses reading proficiency and comprehension. It's a, uh, a comprehensive system um, for students in, of literacy in grades K through 12. And a core component of Read to Succeed is summer reading camp. Um, each district identifies third grade students who are not reading proficiently or on grade level and provides them with the opportunity to attend summer reading camp where they receive targeted instruction from certified teachers in reading and in writing. Districts may also invite other struggling readers in other grades to attend summer reading camp. Um, districts continue the recent trend of offering summer reading camp and expanded the numbers this summer. And all districts offered in-person uh, summer reading camp in 2022 and will be offering in-person summer reading camp in 2023. But if you remember back in the 2017-2018 school year, um, what went into effect with Read to Succeed was a student must be retained in third grade if the student fails to um, demonstrate proficiency at the end of third grade as um, determined by the not met one category on the state Palmetto uh, assessment, state standards assessment. Um, but a student may be exempt from that for good cause. Um, there are six good causes and one of those is summer reading camp. So a good cause exemption for those students is if they successfully complete summer reading camp at the end of third grade and demonstrate through a norm reference assessment they can promote to fourth grade. Here's a key thing about summer reading camp. It must be six weeks in duration, a minimum of four hours a day, um, and um, at least four days per week, or the equivalent of that time. And school transportation um, is provided, and I guess this summer more will travel on a uh, electric bus, which is neat. Uh, the camps must be taught by compensated teachers who have at least um, an add-on literacy endorsement or who have demonstrated um, substantial success in helping students uh, read at grade level. Districts are expected to offer 96 hours of literacy instruction for students during summer reading camp. Um, and they, these are led by teachers who are endorsed through Read to Succeed um, legislation. And uh, there, there are several key components that um, must be in, uh, uh, observed in those classes, but um, the student teacher engagement, um, the instructional materials that are selected, the planning, and the small and whole group instruction are the key parts of that. Um, in 2020, if you remember 2020, um, that summer was an interesting summer um, because of COVID. Our early learning and literacy um, office developed month-long units of instruction um, for students in ELA and math. And it's interesting, those units are still used um, by many districts today. And those were designed to, for remote instruction, but teachers have adopted those to face-to-face -face instruction as well. Um, those lessons were videotaped for students, uh, for teachers uh, as exemplars um, and helped to dim, uh, distribute across the state. Um, in summer of 22, 
we served 11,517 kindergarten through thir uh, third grade students. This is slightly lower than the summer before, which was as we came out of the pandemic um, of about, served about 13,000 um, students. Prior to that, um, the average number was between eight and 9,000 in summer reading camps. So that number continues um, to grow. Um, all student districts are required to offer face-to-face -face camps. And um, while state funding um, for summer reading camp is limited, um, we offer about $700,000 in grants um, where they can partner with community organizations to offer that camp. Um, so districts um, offer um, summer reading camp. At the conclusion of that, they must give one of six approved pre and post assessments. Um, and it's interesting that um, seven, this year, 75% of our students at the end of summer reading camp either maintained or grew um, in their reading proficiency. So I think that's a, a testament to our um, good teachers in, in those classrooms. Um, so in 2021, um, additional federal funding was allowed. And so I think that was one of the reasons we saw an increase in the numbers um, in summer reading camp. But I think uh, as, as we continue to invest in programs like summer reading camp, you're going to see um, the trend increase and we're going to see more students reach our um, proficient level. So with that, that's my report and I'll be glad to answer any questions or take any comments. Does anyone have any questions for Dr. Mathis? Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Mathis. And I know I speak on behalf of the board, but also all of our schools and districts, thanking you for all the work you do and your entire division does to support schools across the state. So thank you for that. We appreciate it. All right. Next, um, we have our updates about our school districts. And I, Director Kimberly Mack, are you going to come forward first and introduce them, or do you want me to go straight into? Oh, well, perfect. <laughs> We're so glad to have two of our superintendents here today to share directly with us um, reports about the great things happening in their school district. Yes, and I'm so excited to introduce to you Dr. Margaret Gilmore. She's awesome. She's leading the helm in Allendale County, and she wants to share with you how things are going down there. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. I am super excited about sharing with you guys this afternoon. Um, I, I let me just tell you that I am the proud superintendent for Allendale County School District. And before I give my report, I, I do have a PowerPoint, and um, I really didn't really come to give updates. I wanted to come to express to our state superintendent, Molly Spearman, the impact that she has had on Allendale County School District. I can tell you, Molly, that you have saved the students of Allendale County School District. The takeover was unfavorable for many, but I can tell you because of your leadership, because of the takeover, Allendale County School District students have been saved. And, and I can't even explain to you the impact that you've had on Allendale County School District. You know, we're going to celebrate Molly the, the first week in January, so don't tell anybody, but we <laughs> are <laughs> celebrate her in a big way and we've been planning we've been planning because we want the state superintendent of education Ms. Molly Spearman to know that you've saved our lives and I, I want you all to give her another round of applause <clears throat> so here are a few updates um, for Allendale County School District. Everything that we do, we're always, it always goes back to the profile of a South Carolina graduate. And it's important to me that our students, uh, they know the competency statements because we call it in Allendale for the students, I can statements. 
And we say to the students all the time, everything that we do has to align to the profile of a South Carolina graduate. This year, we started new themes for our schools. Our elementary school is a STEAM school. So we focus on STEM and the arts at the elementary school. And we're going to talk about those in a few minutes. Our middle school is a leadership school. And in the Maxwell book that Molly introduced us to, we are engulfed in that book. And our students, we are developing leaders at the middle school. At the high school, we are early college high school because a lot of our students more than ever are taking more dual enrollment classes, taking more AP classes on campus and off campus. And we're super excited about the impact uh, that that's having on our high school students. I want you to take a look at our state report card. This may not mean a lot to you, but, but for years, Allendale County School District has been unsatisfactory. But I want you to, I want to report to you today, I want you to take a look at the elementary school. We were two points from being average. I want you to think about us being unsatisfactory for so many years, but we were just two points from being average. At the middle school, we are in the good category, and we're gonna be excellent next year, I promise you. And at the high school, look at the progress that the high school has made. So we, we were at the high school two points from being average. Think about unsatisfactory. Below average, two points from being average. The students of Allendale County School District is making lots and lots and lots of progress. And when you think about the progress that they've made, we at the elementary school, we're average. And at the middle school, we are excellent with the progress. At the high school, our college and career readiness, we're at the average level. Graduation rate is improvement improving. In 2020, our graduation rate was 87.6, but it didn't count that year. But I want you to know that we are making progress with our graduation rate. One of the things that we're doing with our graduate, helping with our graduation rate, I started evening schools for those um, we had students who were 19, 20, and 21 years old with three credits. So we started evening school to target those students and provide additional support for them. These are some of the academic support updates. We uh, just three weeks ago hired two math consultants to help us with our Algebra 1. And we also hired a reading consultant to work with our students with, their, with writing. These are additional supports. And all of this is because of the support that we received from Molly Spearman, the financial support, the, the, um, the personal support that we received from her and her staff. We have, uh, at the elementary school, we have an after-school STEM academy. Academy. We have after school tutoring. Um, we have a Baby Tigers cheerleading squad at the elementary school, which means a lot to the community. Uh, we, we, our new chief of police started a soccer program at the elementary school this year. Uh, we have Saturday school. And it's important to me that we, we started Saturday school for those students who need that additional support uh, beyond what we provide for them during the day. The middle school, we have a practice makes perfect homework center that we have about 75 students who are involved in that program Monday through Thursday. We also have some, um, tutoring at the middle school and all the other activities. High school, we, sh we have the same thing. We just, we just started a new smart STEM lab. It's brand new, hot off the press, and it looks so good. Our focus <laughs> is on STEM and the arts at the elementary school, and we're just so proud of our new STEM lab. Uh, at the middle school, students are actively involved in activities that extend beyond the classroom. They, uh, they took, um, had a great time with their take flight aviation camp for our sixth graders, and it was just a wonderful opportunity for our scholars. At the high school, we're working on the drone pilot license program. Our students deserve every opportunity that we provide for them because they're very special. 
to us. At the elementary school, we're involved with the STEM activities. Uh, Allendale County School District received a $2.5 million arts grant, and we are actively involved in that uh, involvement of the, of the arts. Also, a $30,000 arts in, uh, education program grant we're excited about. These are our already reading growth data scores. Um, look at the typical growth and look at the stretch growth. We are well on our way with improving student outcomes in Allendale County School District. These are our math growth data scores. We have a great partnership with um, the community in Allendale. And one of our pastors who lives in Barnwell uh, is pastor in, at First Baptist in Allendale. He wanted to celebrate and incentivize our students. And he had them at the church. And it was just a great opportunity for our students uh, to be incentivized for the great work that they're doing <coughs> in the classroom. We have lots and lots of professional development in Allendale. We are ensuring that our scholars uh, getting what they need and that our teachers are getting what they need as well. I want you to take a look at that top one, Fall into the Arts Saturday Academy. Um, we, we do have Saturday Academy for our uh, teachers, and this one was especially important to me because we're focusing on the arts. This is uh, the high school JROTC uh, military ball. Uh, I, I can't even explain to you the impact that that had on our scholars. It was just a great, great time for them. Summer learning exploration, we are well on our way uh, to providing summer learning for our scholars. And we, are, we have three pathways this summer, accelerate, create, and stimulate. And we're super excited to provide that uh, opportunity for our scholars as well. I want you to take a look at all the progress that Allendale County School District have made. I know I, can't, I couldn't list all of them, but there are great things that are happening in Allendale County School District. And I am just honored and just so proud to lead that. This is the current status of the district. We met all of our objectives for the state of emergency takeover. We're no longer on the fiscal watch. <laughs> We had a perfect financial audit, no findings. That's huge for Allendale. And I'm so honored to be a part of it. We are changing the headlines in Allendale County School District and we are moving forward. Thank you all so much. Mr. Chair, I, Margaret, Dr. Gilmore is way, way too complimentary to me because honestly, none of this would happen. None of this. It's not Molly Spearman. It's our team. But it's particularly, you know, it all rises and falls on the leadership. Dr. Gilmore has become the strongest advocate for Allendale that I've ever seen. And it is her great leadership and dedication to these wonderful children and community that has really changed the headlines. So thank you, Margaret. It's been an honor to work with you. Thank you for your dedication. And if I may just say, um, Allendale has met all of the requirements that we set as our uh, goal for their district, for our district. And by the way, it's your district. <laughs> um, we had planned to transfer authority back to the Allendale School Board uh, right now. Uh, we had a little glitch with the election, and we, ne we still have two vacancies. One of the board school board members was elected to, to county council, I believe, and another board member was elected who was unable or uh, unqualified to serve. So we're holding a special election, and I hope that just as soon as that is completed. I believe it's supposed to happen in February. We don't have the exact date. That's to be set by the election commission. February 28th, last day of February. This is not a leap year, is it? Yep. And uh, 
we'll be working with Superintendent Lake Weaver, but we've already talked, and when that happens and it goes well, I, I anticipate that the transfer of authority will happen very, very quickly uh, after that. So thank you, Margaret, Dr. Gilmore, for your leadership. And I am very happy to introduce to you all Dr. Kelvin Wilms, who came in and took over Williamsburg um, County School District after we lost our dear Dr. Rose Wilder. So I'm going to turn it over to him. Good afternoon. Um, like Superintendent Gilmore, I express an unbelievable debt of gratitude to Madam Superintendent Spearman. Um, without you, uh, the children of Williamsburg County would suffer immensely and greatly. Um, I've had the astute pleasure to work with State Superintendent Spearman as well as the late Dr. Rose Wilder. Um, this has been a tough year for me personally, as well as the county of Williamsburg. Um, in Rose, I'd like to, I would be remiss if I didn't um, say some thoughts about Rose to this state board before I begin this presentation. Um, Cause Rose was a great champion for education and a great champion for South Carolina, period. Um, and Rose would often say, we must be ready to be uncomfortable because discomfort often ushers in growth and a new and better life. I truly believe the vineyard is ripe and the harvest is plentiful in Williamsburg County. I am most excited because our scholars are ready to be engaged in a productive struggle. Together we will reach higher levels of collective efficacy, which will bring us academic achievement. Pessimism and optimism cannot exist in the same vessel. Our scholars cannot afford us to not be ready to move with a sense of urgency. Um, as we begin this presentation, as I said, uh, Dr. Wilder was a great mentor, as well a better friend and leader. Um, what we have tried to do and what I am committed to doing is implementing all of her plans, policies, and future um, dealings in Williamsburg County. None of this is possible without State Superintendent Molly Spearman, her love for children, her support of impoverished districts, and what she, uh, her team has been unbelievable. And I can tell you when we lost Rose, I leaned on her as well as her team on a daily basis uh, just to make it. And our community has rallied behind this merger. You hear a lot, we don't call it a consolidation. We call it our kids, really aligned with what we were doing when we merged King Street High School with C. Murray. And, and they've grown from this experience as well as our adults. Um, I was at an event yesterday with Senator Saab, Ronnie Saab and Billy Jenkinson, both of them tell me to tell you hello. They were not always in favor of this merger. They are right now because they are seeing the positives in this community. So once again, I give you a heartfelt thanks for what you've done and you will always be a part of the Williamsburg County community. Thank you. Um, our basic mission, um, like Superintendent Spearman has said, is students first in everything we do. Everything we want to align, everything that we do, every department, we want to think about students. Our schools. Um, when I first started working with Rose in May, of last year, our infrastructure in Williamsburg County was in bad shape. Without the help of the State Department and uh, State Superintendent Spearman, we do not have some of the quality educational environments that we have now. I think that's one of the big things that have motivated our students this year, that they have come back to several refurbished buildings that have ignited their flame for learning. Our students, our students are unbelievable. Um, I'm, I was more of a numbers guy until I met Rose. And Rose often told me, you gotta look beyond the numbers. You have to really get to know these young people for what they are and who they are. And you have to have daily conversations. Get out, get in the car, throw away the pen and paper and just go into school some days and just talk to the students, see what's working, see what's not working. And that has been a tremendous influence on my life. Our students 
deserve the best because when given the opportunity to succeed and when we reach out to them, they can make anything happen. I am convinced of that. Our staff, it's been a tough year in Williamsburg County. Um, we lost Rose and we also lost two teachers in a car accident uh, during the Thanksgiving holidays. But because of the influence and the culture and climate that Rose built along with State Superintendent Spearman, uh, we have a can-do attitude in Williamsburg County. And we know that all things are possible. And we see examples like what's going on in Allendale. And we know that our data will change. We will change the narrative. And one of the most important initiatives that we started in this community, it is a poor, impoverished communities. I worry whenever we're out of school, like the incoming holidays are our students eating. So this community free meal for all students program has been essential because if kids are hungry, there's no way they're gonna learn. Um, Williamsburg County passed all of the, uh, was awarded the accredited district last year by Cognia. Uh, Rose worked tremendously hard to assure this. Um, and up until the time of her death, Rose was working un an unbelievable amount of time that it was just, I had no idea how sick she truly was. Um, and, and that in itself has left an indelible impression on this community. And one of the most important parts of, of what we do every day in Williamsburg is we wanna concentrate on rigor, relevance, and relationships. Um, and we want to cultivate an environment where that our kids and our, our, our teachers, everybody's in a productive struggle daily to make sure that we assure academic achievement and success, whether it be the workforce, military, or two or four year colleges. We want to make sure that our students understand that we are going to be successful in whatever endeavor we choose. Um, our framework and support for schools, uh, the first, is talent management. Uh, I think we've started very well in that direction of setting a foundation. We hired a young man, Michael White, um, two weeks ago, who's gonna do tremendous things for Williamsburg County. Uh, our instructional infrastructure and leadership, we've realigned all of our pacing guides, our syllabi, and we're making sure everything matches up with state standards. The culture, climate, and programming, that was one of Rose's biggest um, achievements. It's, it's unbelievable to me what she did in Williamsburg from when she first got there. Uh, every place I go, people tell me about the influence that Rose has had on her. And once again, Rose's influence, and she, I would say, beat this into my head, none of the things would be possible without Molly's direct influence and support. Uh, family and community engagement, that has been the hardest task, but I think a lot of what's going on in Williamsburg this year with the merger, our, our community's rallying around the school, around these students. And, and that's very uh, important, but also very encouraging to see. Um, and our instructional in, uh, focus, we, ju we just really, sometimes you have to back up and punt and make sure you're going in the right direction. And academically, that's what we're doing. We're making sure all of our tools, all of our, everything that we use academically is aligned with state focus and state standards. On our report card, we see movement. We see, we have a long way to go to change this narrative academically. But what we are doing currently is setting the foundation. We have schools that are maintaining, have maintained out of COVID, and now we wanna raise everybody up to standard. We wanna move forward in every, every school, that we have, we wanna make sure that there's a push, an academic push. Uh, these are some very vital programs that Rose had talked about that we wanted to make sure that we really focused on and really implemented. Um, I can tell you she left a great blueprint. Um, a lot of what we're doing now is things that she was committed to uh, before she lost her life. and. Uh, we're gonna make sure that they happen and they happen successfully and they happen correctly. Uh, several points of pride. Uh, one that really stands up, stands out to me, the Flexible Learning Academy is for overage students, middle school, high school, students that are behind, <coughs> students that were not on track to graduate, we're seeing a lot of movement 
in that area. We're seeing a lot of parents coming back. We have a night school started. Um, we've also rebranded the district with a new logo, all of our schools, um, and our STEM electives. We've strengthened that area because we want to give our students every opportunity to be successful, as well as the fine arts. Several new programs as we were starting from scratch, but this was already on the board. We've started a commitment with Fred, Dr. Fred Carter Francis Marion and Darla Moore to continue. Um, we've also, um, our dual enrollment numbers are up. Our early college is beginning and we are committed to doubling those numbers and tripling those numbers and really recruiting in our community and giving our kids the encouragement and the motivation that they can do anything. This was one of Rose's points of pride. This is the merger band. It's 115 members. They've just been invited to the Vietnam Veterans Day Parade in Honolulu, Hawaii, 115 members strong. Very talented group of young people. Um, once again, without the support of the State Department, we were able to purchase new uniforms, new instruments. Uh, these kids are unbelievable. Uh, they work just as hard as any of my athletic teams, and they're on fire, uh, and I'm really proud of them. The next uh, slides are just some examples of how we re-envisioned the high school. Um, Rose really walked us through these steps. She never actually got to walk in this high school, but these are points of pride for me because this is her vision. And I think she was very committed to environment, that if you give kids a positive and uh, committed learning environment that they would achieve. So that's one of the things that we're gonna make sure happens. This is another example. She was big on looking first class, being first class. She was a lady. Uh, and so we make sure when our kids go out, they're first class, that they can compete with anybody, anywhere, any place. Also, uh, two of our new projects are our STEM lab uh, that we will open in a couple of days. <laughs> and we're very excited about that in our community. As well as our Kate Pathways, uh, we've added our gaming lab as well. And basically, we just want to give our students opportunities that everyone else has, and we want to make sure we maximize their abilities. Basically, um, we've really doubled down on our commitment with our community, and, and we know we can't do this alone. It's got to be a team effort. So the next couple of slides are just about our partnerships and what we're doing on a daily basis to have a better environment and community for our kids. It's not going to happen overnight. It's not going to happen with just me. It's not about me. It's about us and where we can go. And these are several of our partners that do an unbelievable job and have really um, come to our support in our time of need. And as I leave, I want to say again, uh, thank you, Molly Spearman. <laughs> I've had the pleasure of working with you uh, for a number of years. Uh, one thing about you, you are first class. You've always been about kids and you have always done what you said you would do. So I thank you and God bless you and your family and I hope you enjoy yourself. And if you ever need me, I'm a phone call away. Thank, thank you. you. Mr. Chair, if I may, um, I, I hope you all are very filled by both of these reports. Um, Dr. Wims, thank you for being there and available. I, I'm so grateful to you as Dr. Gilmore and my dear, dear friend, Rose Wilder, who we miss so much, but her legacy goes on forever. Uh, would I never, none of this success would have happened without these great leaders. And I, all I had to do was make the decision and then support them with our staff to put them in place. It's because great things happen when you got great leaders. And um, I'm just so thankful for you all. You can't really appreciate this unless you've been there and seen where it was. I know you know some of the things that these two districts faced when we took over management, but oh my goodness, 
Williamsburg, Rose found out they had not ordered textbooks in four or five years. There were old books that the kids didn't even have the new books that had been adopted. I mean, it was just, and I, the list could just go on and on, but where we started and where we've come is just amazing. And the decision to close C.E. Murray was difficult in a way because I, the community loved their school so much, but it was pretty easy because it was so obvious and it was the right thing. And how those students have led the way to make that success there is just extraordinary. There's still decisions that need to be made in Williamsburg and they too were meeting with their board and I had hoped to transfer the authority back, but we're not quite there. Uh, anticipate the end of this school year, but that will be up to superintendent-elect. But uh, I just feel really good about what's happened. They have come so far and are at a place now where I think the community, we wanted to get them in a place where the community then could be successful with great leaders. And, and just, um, it's just, thank y'all. Thank you. It's amazing what you all have accomplished. And board, I appreciate your support. You never questioned it. You, you saw it, you saw the need and you have supported us in every way. And I know you've sat through, Dr. Kim Mack has given us reports and Kim, thank you for your dedication. Dr. Latoya Dixon started this work. Kim came in, Dr. Mack and, and has carried it on. Thank you. She spent so much time in both of these, all of these communities and then in Timmonsville. And by the way, Dr. Wims was with us in Timmonsville in Florence to help the Timmonsville work there. So thank you all so much for, for what you've done. And I appreciate y'all sitting through a little longer presentation, but I thought it was so important for the board to see what, what has been accomplished there. I'm so proud of you. We do echo that. And thank you, Dr. Gilmore, um, who I get to work beside because we're neighbors, neighboring districts, and Dr. Wims for being here today and sharing with us firsthand the dynamic programs and initiatives that are going on within your districts. We truly appreciate that. Um, for our board members, please don't forget to give your travel forms um, to Tracy before you leave if you have not. And as we close, um, as Superintendent Spearman, I, I know today and so many other things that have happened in these last several weeks um, just attest to the legacy you are leaving behind and the work you're doing. And we know we are better people for having worked alongside you with that, and we do appreciate that, and we appreciate your entire team. So before we adjourn the meeting, if we could just give one more round of applause for everyone. <laughs> Truly remarkable. So thank you for that. And with no other business. Don't forget to ride the bus. Oh, uh, don't forget to go and ride the bus. <laughs> go see the bus. I don't know if we're going down the road, but we're going to go we'll get on it. Um, but with no other business, this meeting is adjourned. Okay. <laughs>